Thanks so much to all my patrons. Join now to help support the channel and help pick the books that I review. Link in the description. And I am done. Okay, so I just got finished reading Empire of the Damned. This is book two of the Empire of the Vampire series by Jay Kristoff, and I want to give you my unedited thoughts upon finishing this book, which was literally just right now. So, ho ho, yeah! This book is so, so dope. I love this thing so much. It is such a wonderful feeling when you have very high expectations about a new release and then it exceeds them. Um, I haven't had that happening a lot. I, I find lately I've been really optimistic about something and then I read it and I'm severely underwhelmed or at least a little bit underwhelmed, but this really blew me out of the water. Now, I, I gave the first book, uh, Empire of the Vampire, a, a five out of five, but it wasn't like, you know, the highest of the five out of fives. I did love it. But, you know, there's a lot of books that year that I read it um, where I, I had a lot of books that were higher on my on my list. It's going to be hard to have a lot of books this year top top this one because this is just everything that I loved about the first book was there. Any problems that I had were totally fixed and it introduced so many different elements to what I wanted and I didn't realize that I wanted out of this book and just took it to a totally, totally different level. And I'm just shocked. I mean, this really was like a perfect book. Now, I suspect that you're gonna have some people that, you know, disagree with this. There's no opinion that's just like totally, you know, perfect out there that we all agree with. That'd be great if it was, but it's not. Um, but, but I bet a lot of people are gonna love this thing. And, you know, if you like the first book, there's there's nothing to dislike here and I can't, fathom a scenario where somebody's going to say like, yeah, you know, it's not quite as good as the first one. That, that would be nuts to me. So yeah, go pick up this book. Uh, go, if you haven't read the first one, go pick it up, it, throw out any preconceived notions you have about the cover, which is a little ridiculous. Um, and the idea that it's about vampires and even the title of this book and this series are, do not, instill a lot of confidence in me as a reader uh, to, for something that I'd want. Now, I read the first one um, when I never, ever would have read it before, but somebody picked it for me. It was one of those books that won the Patreon spin, uh, one of the first books that won the Patreon spin, maybe the first. Um, and it was like, man, I it really opened my eyes to like, I, I cannot, you know, the very obvious judge a book by its cover um, or even judge a book by genre and <laughs> or like the type of book it is a vampire book that sounds really dumb in 2024 right no it is so good so backing up a little bit you might have seen that i read this in physical book format um and that this is not the actual cover of the book um i wanted so badly to get my hands on this uh, normally when i reach out to publishers they are very happy to send me the books um this time i reached out way too late um i reached out and they said sorry we've already given out all our copies um you know, sign up so you don't miss out next time and all this, you know, yada, yada, yada stuff I probably should have listened to. So don't miss out next time on other books. Um, but then like a few days later, um, it was at, it was at my PO box. And so I don't know if that person sent it to me or I was on some other list where it got sent, but I was so excited about it. Um, not excited that I had to read a physical book. I would have much preferred to get the ebook and, but I get, the reason that they don't want to send that, they're worried about pirating. Um, in fact, I think the ebook that went out on uh, on NetGalley was only the first half of the book. And so you're going to see some reviews of this book that are really negative from those early reviewers. They're going to say like, it's such a weird, it ends in such a weird spot. Yeah, you didn't you didn't read the whole thing. Um, and it wasn't really obvious uh, that, it, that it did that. So I'm, I'm glad that I didn't get that copy. That would have sucked because I know exactly where it stopped. And that would have been not good if it stopped at that point, um, right about the halfway point. Because this book is really divided into big chunks and you'll understand in a minute why it's divided into those chunks. Um, but yeah, I hate reading regular books. It sucks. Um, because you have to hold them and stuff and like they don't have a light and you can't take notes on them. Yeah, whatever. Uh, but the nice thing about reading this one in particular is that it comes with pictures. Um, I, you know, it's got a very nice looking map. Um, if I can find it, um, yeah, a couple nice looking maps. I, I eat up maps. I love them. Uh, really nice. And then in this uh, series, it includes uh, pictures throughout the book, quite a large number of them, which is a really interesting art style. Um, I'll see if I can find one here. Um, yeah, here's one. 
Uh, it looks really cool. Now, I don't know if it's going to come out in color in the regular book, but the downside is, is that after about the first 10 or so photos, um, it stopped putting the photos in. It would just say, like, Illustration TK, which I'm guessing, I don't know what it stands for, but it's like, yeah, we'll put them in the real version. You're not getting, getting those. So, yeah, I missed out on most of the pictures, but whatever. Um, so, yeah, let's talk about this book individually and why I loved it so much. Let's go and talk about a little bit about the plot of this series. So, this is a epic fantasy vampire book, which is really, really cool because most of the times when you deal with these vampire stories, they're very isolated. They're, they're small in scope. Um, oftentimes they deal with an individual vampire. Um, but this one, even on its title, empire of the vampire, we're dealing with an entire empire full of vampires and just the concept of that's great. Um, but you have this main character, uh, Gabriel de Leon, and I'm not going to say a ton of names here cause I'll botch them. Uh, cause everything's like in French in this book, um, with all the names and the culture references and some of the words even are, are very French. Uh, but it's not in France. It's just like, you know, whatever. They're just like, let's just pick up the French theme here, uh, which is totally fine. Uh, but you got this character. He is the uh, he is a silver saint. And essentially what that is, is that he is half vampire, half human. Uh, he, one of his parents was a vampire. And it has made him have a lot of the powers of a vampire. Uh, without the inherent strength of one, the, the over-the-top strength. But also, critically, without the weaknesses also. He's got some of them uh but you know he's not doesn't have to drink blood all the time you know he he does have uh, some of the things you know like silver will hurt him he can't cross running water and and all you know some of the regular things but you know he so he's got some of the benefits and doesn't have some of the negatives but he is a vampire hunter and he is part of an order the order of san Mikel, i think it is um or san Mikel or san something and they are everybody one of them is half vampire and they're, they want to eradicate this empire of vampires that rules uh, over everything. And so the empire is split up into, uh, I don't want to say the exact number because there's some things in this book that will mess with that a little bit. Um, but the, there are a number of different vampire uh, blood, uh, blood strains and that control different parts of the continent. And they each have different powers associated with them. And these vampires are terrifying. It, it's, it's really impressive how truly scary these vampires are. I mean, this is a horror book in a, in a lot of ways, but the, uh, essentially the main character finds a, a girl who is very important. I don't want to say why and takes her under his wing. And he believes that she can save the world from these vampires and, and eradicate them. And that's basically the first book. And, you know, huge set piece battles, uh, extremely excessively violent, um, and which I love. I love that kind of thing. Uh, and it gets really dark and it ends on a very, very interesting kind of cliffhanger moment. This book opens up. Well, before I go there, let me just say that this is all all written in the in the style of like a name of the wind where you have this character who is in the present day. Uh, as soon as the book opens up, he is uh, being interrogated by a vampire. He is in chains, and the vampire wants to know how he was able to kill, and his story, kill the forever king, uh, like the biggest, baddest vampire uh, th that existed. And so Gabriel is telling his life story uh, to this vampire, this historian vampire. And that's the style. But I find it... Uh, I want to talk a little bit about this style right now, because... There's a lot of books and a lot of series that utilize this framing narrative where you're telling a story to somebody. This is the best um, style of framing that I've seen before in a book. Um, I don't want to say like the best book with a framing narrative. Maybe it is, uh, but the style. And what I mean by that is oftentimes you find, I'll use Name of the Wind, for example, you know, you know because the book opens up with this framing narrative, but then they go and, and tell the story. And every now and then there will be a chapter or two where they get sucked back in the present to kind of talk about what was happening. And then they'll go back into the story. And even though you get that overall sense that a story is being told, you, you forget that kind of throughout the book because so much of the story is being told in the past. Um, you know, you have a series like the sun eater, which is one of my favorite series, which uses it even lighter. You know, you, you know, it's a story, but they don't bounce back very often. It's extremely rare. In this one, it's a lot 
of bouncing back and forth. And a lot, a good amount of the story, not even close to half, but a, a solid chunk of the story is in the present. And even within the chapters, there will be moments that will suck you out of that past moment that's being told. And then you'll have a conversation between this vampire and Gabriel, um, or they'll just a, a small little interjection and then going right back into it. And it feels disjointed at the beginning, but eventually you come to cherish it because it makes you never forget that this is happening. And it feels so real and alive. And you constantly feel like a story is being told to you, the reader. It also uses this really interesting device. Now, the first book, I didn't realize it because I did it on an audiobook. This one I did physical. Uh, but the entire book is written in quotation marks because a story is being told. So there's got to be, I mean, I don't know if you can see this uh, that far away, but look at these quote. like the entire book is quotations. Um, and I love, I love it so much that the author went to the painstaking effort to remind you with every word of this book about what is actually happening here and that you can't forget what is what tense this book is being told in. It's wonderful. Now, this book does something a bit different where you do go back into the story to hear this, but there is another character in this story who is very important. And constantly throughout this book, we get the story from Gabriel and then the vampire leaves to go get the story from a different perspective from this other person. And so the vampire is constantly bouncing between these two characters. So we get this new point of view. It utilizes Kristoff's wonderful writing ability to show the story from a different perspective, um, but also gives a totally different, not only does it give you a different like mindset of somebody telling the story, but a totally different set of eyes that can give a totally different perspective on this. It's great. I love this decision. It could have crashed and burned. It didn't. It was wonderful. And when these stories start coming together towards the end of this book, it makes the giant revelations and the explosive moments that much more powerful uh, because he was able to kind of tease along the reader for so long. Um, it's just it's just great. Um, the story itself here, I don't want to talk too much about the story. It just continues the first one, trying to save the earth. Um, but it, it's far more of an epic story. There's a lot more locations that are being dealt with. Um, a lot more of the different bloodlines. You meet a lot more characters. It does feel like an epic fantasy, finally. The first one felt kind of like that. This one definitively is within that category. It's awesome. Uh, I also love that this book just does not pull any punches. It is There's a lot of foul language in this book, which fits the theme so wonderfully. But it's not in that YA kind of mold where you'll see it a lot, or the romance uh, fantasy stories, which I've had to read a couple re recently. They just decide to use the F word a million times, and they want to make that the way they do it. This one is inventive. It is like, they'll say things that will actually make me laugh because of how like kind of raunchy they are, but putting these different words together to make some totally different thing that I've never heard before. It's really well done. fits the theme totally well. Uh, I mean, I touched on it earlier, but this book is also <laughs> extremely violent. I mean, it is, it, it goes there and then, and then some, uh, there is some raunchy moments as well. I mean, Christoph can't write a book without writing some pretty intense sex scenes. If you're into that, you're going to enjoy this book a lot. I don't love that kind of stuff, but it did fit the theme. I mean, vampires are kind of known for this kind of thing. They have th literal thralls that will do whatever they want. So obviously that's going to, that's going to be a thing. It's not all over the place. It's actually less than any of the other books that I've read of his, but there are a couple big moments for that. You know, it, it goes there, but it's not like the romance type of intimate moments that you would expect out of a normal uh, fantasy story where people are, you know, these lovers for a while and they're, or they fall in love. And then this big intense moment happens. Uh, you know, these are, full of regret and violence and they're always told for a purpose to move the plot forward in a really interesting way. I don't want to say more than that, but it's really fascinating to watch how these moments actually go down. Um, I'll also say about, uh, I, I want to put a, I don't think it's a warning, at least it's not for me, but I want to throw it out there that, you know, the, the culture here is clearly very bisexual and, you know, these vampires don't care who they're sleeping with. Uh, there is a lot of, you know, like gay characters in the story. Um, it fits the theme really well and it works really well. And they just don't care what gender is. And it's not 
There's, there are a couple gay characters, but I, I shouldn't say that. It's a lot of bisexuality. If, if that's something you can't handle in a story, and I've had comments in my videos where they, like, I'll mention that somebody's gay, and they're like, oh, I'm not reading it. You will hate this book uh, because it is everywhere. Uh, I think I've had more people on my channel that have said, like, they actually go intentionally seek out stories that have that in it. Um, and, but if, and if that's the case, God, you're going to love this thing. If you're like me and you don't care and you just want a good story, then whatever. It fits the theme really nicely and it works really well for, for what the story is being told. So I quite liked it. Um, it. Sometimes I feel like it can be indulgent. It can be there just to appease a certain crowd. Um, looking at you like Gideon the Ninth. Um, there's a few stories like this. It doesn't feel like that. This feels like it, it was made for this book and the book wouldn't work as well without it, which I can't say a lot of. And so, yeah, worked to perfection. The writing quality of Kristoff, I feel like keeps improving. Um, now, I've always thought Christoph was a gifted writer. Well, and that's not true, actually. Um, in his uh, Nevernight series, I think, was it Nevernight, what he wrote before? Um, I think it was Nevernight. It was indulgent. And it felt like he was trying to be smarter than he was. This one feels like he is genius-level writing. I love it. Uh, he doesn't overdo things. It just roll, flows so smooth. Uh, I love, 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 love the prose in this book. Now, again, prose is very subjective. I, I know that there's, um, who is it? There's a, there's a booktuber I know that reviewed the first book and he ripped the, he ripped the prose to shreds. And I thought it was a really, really funny review. Um, and so yeah, maybe you'll hate it. Maybe it's like, no, how, if you like this, then you must be an idiot. Maybe, maybe <laughs> that's, that's certainly possible. Um, but it, it, for me, it, it just worked so well. I, I, I ate up the prose. This is really just a perfect book. You know, I, the world building is just such a wonderful surprise at how in-depth it is. Just truly, truly amazing world building. Um, the intense look at the different aspects that make vampirism interesting were, were just wonderful. We get to the, the true depths of some of these characters, and they're not these soulless um just like automatons, which you kind of view vampires as, is like very bland as a character. No, these are these characters have depth, even though they are evil. And I, I just love it. Uh, and you don't get them as a first-person perspective, but it's great to be able to uh, to see it from their perspective. It's, re it's really awesome. Um, but what more can I say? Go check out this book. And if you haven't, go check out the first book. Uh, it, it's, it's truly great. This guy deserves your attention. I think this series is going to blow up a little bit. There's being a lot of attention being put on this series. I know that the, uh, the publisher here is really trying to get this book in, in reviewers hands, not just about this, but I, I went and looked it up and there's a big marketing campaign going on with this thing. Um, so good for Kristoff. Happy when authors that I like start to kind of take off. And it really seems like that's what's happening here with Kristoff. So check out this thing while it's hot. Uh, you know, don't read it if you are shied away from violence uh, or you just truly hate anything, vamp you know, vampire. But outside of that, enjoy this thing. If you love epic fantasy and you like things a little darker, Empire of the Vampire is where it's at. So that is it for me. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, happy reading to you. Thanks again to all my patrons with a special shout out to my Ascendant tier and Librarian tier patrons, Anna G, CJ, Doust, Darren, Gregory, JD, Jonathan, Nathan T, Nev's Book Channel, Orthodoxia, Ron Reich, Russell, Ryan L, Sydney Baker, Tay C, Tahir, Anna, Andra, Blair, Brock, Evan, Harry B, Joe UK, Cat Mick, Michael Sugarman, Philippe, Sky, Wacky, and Zion. Thanks for sticking to the end of this video, and if you want to watch some more content from my channel, click over here and I've got some good videos for you. Thanks so much.